Hello everyone, today I'm here with Donald Smith. Uh, how is it going, man? It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's going good. I, I just woke up, um, I sleep in on Sundays a lot, but uh, yeah, it's going good. Um, the weather's gotten better in Seattle, so, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm outside more biking and all that. Donald, uh, for people who don't know, Donald is a former professional player currently working for Wizards. I always like to talk to people who work for Wizards and, you know, that they used to be like professional pl players to like find out why they, you know, maybe quit. Uh, you know, maybe maybe they will give us some hint what what's going to come out and stuff. Like usually not, usually <laughs> probably not. But I'll try my best. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, the first thing that I want to ask about, uh, you actually have like Jr. like Junior like everywhere on social media. Do, like, is yeah. your, does your father have the same name or like what is going on with that? Yeah, yeah, no. My my dad is Donald Wayne Smith. I'm Donald Wayne Smith Junior. Um, is it actually in your ID that you're like a junior or is it just like a thing? Yeah, no, no, it's actually in my ID. It, uh, it actually makes like flying awkward sometimes because uh, like not every airline has like a field for junior and then like they look at my passport oh. and like their system breaks. I also like get my dad's mail sometimes <laughs> and uh, he gets my mail sometimes. So yeah, it gets, it gets uh, kind of weird, but... Um, I mean, I don't know. That's my name. How does so that I work in America? Like, if your father has the same name as you, you immediately like become junior, or do you like have to choose that, or how does? Uh, it it depends on the parents. It's just how they want to name their kids. Some people are like the second. Some people are junior. I think some people just don't do it at all. Uh, I think it's just all whatever mm -hmm. the parents want, basically. Okay, uh, let, let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, I asked you before on Twitter. Uh, you, you said you said that you like games. You you mentioned like League of Legends <laughs> and stuff like that. Is that like, just like something that you follow for fun, or where you like every competitive or you know, anything like that? Oh, uh, so I yeah, I've I've mostly been like a fan of esports. So I I've always played games, whatever. But like when StarCraft Two came out, I got really big into the scene, and that was like it felt. I felt like that's like the first esport, like modern esport, I guess, with like Twitch. It was just in TV back then, and I was like a super fan of it. Um, and yeah, I've just been like a soup, like I don't know, so into esports stuff uh, since 2010, I guess. Uh, but no, I was never. I don't know. I can't do well with these games where you need like a lot of APM or high reaction time. So, uh. so I always just sat and watched basically. Yeah, because it's kind of interesting. You got into magic, uh, I think, when you started studying college, college, which is like usually pretty late for people who be yeah. become pros. Obviously, there are a lot of people who get into it late, but you, you, for the most part, the people who are in their twenties and, and are pros are usually playing since they were like ten or whatever. Because you just need to accumulate so much knowledge to like play well. But that wasn't mm -hmm. the case for you. Um, you mentioned that the reason why why you didn't find magic was that you grew up in a small town, but you, you still had internet, right? <laughs> or yeah, yeah, I uh, we still had internet. It's just <laughs> like I played like Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, I had Pokemon cards because like that was on the anime or whatever. So mm -hmm. like that's what I knew about. But there was no there was like no LGS to like learn about magic or anything, and there's no magic TV show. So I, I oh, legitimately yeah. never heard about it until. I went to college in 2013. Oh, so it wasn't like there, there just wasn't a space to play. You just didn't even know that it existed. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's kind of well. I, I I don't know. I don't know that many people who like literally never heard of it. That's kind of unusual. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, beats me. I, I... Especially for a guy who like you know works at Wizards right now. You know, it's just kind of I don't know. Yeah, no, it's weird. I'm like I'm like kind of the newbie at work. I'm like I'm the little. Like everyone always jokes, it's like, okay, we have to tell Donald what this card from 2007 is or whatever, because like anything before Return to Ravnica, I I just don't know what the card is. That's crazy. So you got into college and just like some people were playing it right there, or or how did you find out about it? Yeah. So before college, I was like kind of into poker, um, and then. I went to college and like I tried to start up like college poker games, but you know everyone's in college; they don't have money, so I was like, "Oh, okay, well, th this isn't gonna work." Um, and then yeah, like 
while I was like into this poker thing for a little bit, I I, I see my roommate in, in the dorms just playing with their friends. I, I didn't know what they were doing. I just thought, oh, they're playing cards. So I go on in and... Um, how old, old were you, by the way? Because, for example, us, we go to college at like 19 or 20, but you, you guys go earlier, earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, I was 18, so not, oh, okay. not that much earlier. But yeah, I was 18, and um, I don't really remember how it happened, but like, I just sat down, they they're like, you want to play a game, here's a deck. And the next thing I knew, I was just like, I want to play this every day. And like, <laughs> I just went super crazy. Um, do you do you and, think it maybe like damaged your studies because as as you said you were like kind of immediately hooked and I think you got onto the pro scene kind of like right after that so I assume that you had to yeah. play like infinite right yeah so at first it was fine because like the first year of college was pretty easy but uh, it was the second year um, when I started like going to PTQs and like just actual local tournaments it was a combination of the the, my studies got way harder and I actually got competitive so like the moment I like did bad on a test or whatever I, I I don't know just something where I was like oh I hate this and then I need to go play more magic to make myself feel better I guess uh, and it, it kind of fed into itself both aspects mm -hmm. so so you started playing BDQs and stuff how long did it take for you to actually qualify I think I think you, you told me that you top your second GP that you ever played and then you kind of never looked back or was there ever a time where you like qualified and then you had to like re again? Okay, yeah, so yeah, the, the like the timeline of me, I guess, is I started in Theros and then I qualified for the PT on my second GP, which was after Dragons of Tarkir. So that's like a kind of a year and a half um, or so. And yeah, I mean, I had to like, so it's like an 11-5 and into just going to a pro tour for three points and i remember i had to i had to win one rptq but other than the one rptq i actually just i just like was on the train forever through silver and different and 11 fives because i have like a lot of 11 fives you had it so easy man like most, most people don't have it like that like you probably yeah, you probably yeah. you pro you're probably one of those, one of those guys who just like think that you, you just like qualify and then you're fine you know <laughs> But that's not how yeah. it usually is. I'm kind of, I'm kind of jealous, actually. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people. It, I kind of didn't realize this after. Where like people are like, they. I was like, I don't know. It's just an eleven five. It's not a big deal. They're like, what do you mean? If you just only make eleven fives, you're like a. Well, I, I don't think I'm it's like, like you know super hard to make eleven five, but I think you're like maybe like 25 percent or whatever. So like mm -hmm. you know there are people who are just not that good, but they make that. But like. You have to get pretty lucky to 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 to, to get there, you know, like regardless. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. <laughs> so, so, and, um, so, so once you like actually became a pro, like what happened? What happened to your school life? I assume that you, you know it definitely was a struggle for me. So I'm kind of curious what you were thinking at that time. Like, did you like think you know what what what, what happened there? Yeah. So when I first got on the pro tour, I, I didn't really consider myself a pro yet. I was just like. You know, like I hit silver at the end of the season, and it was just like I was like, okay, I want to work to get silver, and that was um, during that time I was doing pretty badly. But then I switched majors, so I was studying engineering, and then I went to study like pure math, and then like with the idea that I'm going to be like a math teacher, um, and I actually started doing a lot better when like I I realized like I just didn't like the engineering classes, and I, I liked my math classes, but then. Uh, it was so I hit silver. My school was going okay, and then it was the the next season started. So I'm back at zero pro points, and I go to Honolulu because I'm just going to use my silver invite, and then whatever happens happens, and I'm just going to start focusing on school. I go to Honolulu. I eleven five, and then I'm qualified for Dublin, and then Dublin's like right at the start of the like the next school year so again school's going fine and then i top eight dublin i'm like oh god i'm a gold pro now like i look at everything about worlds and platinum and this and that i'm like oh well like if i go to every grand prix like i could actually like very easily get to worlds and get platinum and then that's when i'm like well i, I kind of have to make a decision and then i just decided okay i'm gonna fly to grand prix every week and obviously like just cuts into all my study time and like 
I'm missing classes and stuff. And yeah, I started failing classes again. Do you, do you, do you regret that decision or like if, if you could go back, would you do the same? Or was it just that, you know, in that time you you to pay the, you to pay the PT. I assume like you don't really think about anything besides magic and you like, you just kind of had to, or like what was going, what was going on? Yeah, I don't really regret it. because like, it wasn't like, I definitely don't rec recommend people to like drop out of like, or, you know, start failing classes or drop out to go pro from nothing but like i was at least a gold pro then so i was like i don't know i said i i could always like pause school for a year and come back but like i can't pause being a gold pro um and just like having all these qualifications and like also my top eight gave me like money to travel right uh so i, I was like it's it's this year or never right like because mm -hmm. it's if I, if I don't take advantage of it, then like I, I'd probably fall back to silver, uh, the next year. Cause like, I, I knew, I knew I like, I wasn't like hot, hot shit or anything. Um, I, I kinda, you know, I kinda got lucky. I spiked my one event, but I knew I still had so much way to go to be like an actual consistent pro. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's kind of weird. Like, well, with what you're descri describing, it kind of seems like, you know, magic was like your passion and you like really wanted to go to be a pro. But then once you actually got there, you like decided to quit and go work for Wizards. So did you just maybe thought that, you know, it's a one chance opportunity and if you don't take it, you will not get it again. So you like had to even though you didn't want to or like what happened there? Yeah, it, that was like, yeah, I said like gold is being a one chance, gold into platinum is like a one chance opportunity. But then this was like, I'm like wow i really can't like this is like okay this opportunity like like at least okay like okay if wizards doesn't work out or whatever i could go back to being a pro because like they would re-give me my gold status um you know assuming things didn't change how, how does that even break now because now now we don't have any gold like do, do does the person become like rival or something or do, do you even know uh i don't know the exact details um i know we i know we like we don't put them into rivals or whatever but we do give uh some qualifications i don't know how many qualifications but you, you do get to qualify okay, for okay i see yeah, yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. oh, i interrupted yeah, you go I ahead yeah. The, yeah yeah i couldn't pass up the wizard's job uh and and that was like so like i basically had to make the decision whether to work for wizards after i already got platinum and I don't know when they they gave me the offer i'm like wow this is a really good deal and i, don't know, I felt like i had to take it because it's it's like a dream job too right like being a game designer or whatever mm -hmm. uh i remember like all my friends in middle school used to be like i want to make games when i grow up it's just like it's what people want to do as a kid was that a hard decision for you at all like you know you just became platinum you can platinum you can just like kind of become a famous person uh, or was it like not close at all because you know this is just like overall like a better decision like what do you think i th it, it was like it was not close but i didn't feel like great about it because yeah i do yeah i did feel like i kind of yeah like especially like at the time i was like i was actually gonna start like streaming and and really like really try to not not just like go to tournaments but like try to like squeeze it squeeze it drop yeah yeah and uh and like the streaming thing i knew was actually really well timed because like no one was streaming at the time like uh like i don't know if you know wyatt darby like his stream kind of blew up cause partially because i think his timing was so good where he mm -hmm. like he, he felt like the first pro sh like actual pro streamer kind of thing and like i was actually kind of gonna try to fill that niche um and yeah, I don't know. It it does. I do wonder every once in a while, like, oh, what could have been? Like, I was really setting myself up for success, I think. But uh, just the the consistency of like having an actual job, and you know, that doesn't come around often. Uh, do you do know, you I, do you think that if you didn't take it at that time, you wouldn't be able to get there later? Like, let's say that you just did they did they give you the offer, and you say like, well, I would like to maybe. You know try my best this platinum year or maybe two and th th then i would like to come here like you think that they would refuse you then or you just didn't want to uh, take the risk yeah it, it's mostly a big risk because it, it's less about like oh would they take me or would they not and it's more about uh when 
when does a spot open up? Like that's actually the biggest oh. factor. You, you can't play around like when a spot opens up and then like also it's I mean the fact of the matter is is like if I if if the pro thing didn't work out and then like someone else like someone else, you know, comes up and you know, maybe I'm just old news at that point that they're not interested. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. I just wanted to hear your opinion. Yeah, yeah. So let's th talk about a uh, job a little bit. I obviously I understand that you cannot really like say anything that you know you would get fired for. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but what are you actually doing? Are you, are you part of the the testing team that test cards? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm part of play design. Uh, so yeah, what we do is um, we're the people that like play test standard basically. Do you? How does that work out? Because I assume that. You know, people oftentimes complain about certain cards or whatever, but I assume you're not only testing for like the pro tour level play, but you also test so that like random people who play home have fun, right? Or is that not the factor? Uh, yeah, we, we kind of, we, the, the things we build are competitive. Like we, we, we don't just like make a casual deck to make a casual deck, but mm -hmm. like we, the, the thing is, we get to choose what we make strong and we get to choose what we make weak. So when we're playing games, uh, we like, we do make decisions like, oh, th this card doesn't seem that fun at like a high competitive level or like we wouldn't want to see it like be tier one or whatever. So like, okay, let's weaken it and then like, but still support it such that someone could bring it to FNM for example and like, and not just be completely embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it, I always like show like I feel there's a lot less dead rares in a set like if you go look at like something like let's say Ixalan or whatever the, there's just so many like random seven mana cards that you couldn't even play at FNM and I feel we have a lot less of that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, you know you're not the one who make, makes the cards, right? There's like a design team who designs the cards, and then they give it to you and you play with it, and you say like this should be weakened and this should be stronger. But like, what yeah. what what is sometimes they give you like something that is like really really bad. Like they want to make a certain mechanic because it just like fits the team or whatever. But you guys realize mm -hmm. that it's just like too strong. Like what happens? Yeah. So there's there's like a lot of different steps. I guess the relevant ones is um there's vision design, which is like really early on, and that's kind of when they make the mechanics. Then there's set design, and that's when like it's like the mechanic come and then set design is like when the cards come and that's like when a lot of uh a lot of the like rares meant for like standard are made and that's when the draft environment is mostly made and then comes us but we're like involved uh, we're like kind of involved all throughout the process like there's always like someone in play design keeping an eye on uh even before we're like playing it in standard so we kind of have those conversations beforehand and we like Especially in vision, we like we we tell the people we just deliver feedback. We're like, oh, like we think this could easily like be really good in standard. Like like let's say something like kicker, right? Like mm -hmm. oh yeah, like we could change all the cost and all the effects, and it's really easy. But something like party, for example, in Zendikar, which like didn't really hit at all. That's like a we we tell them we're like, hey, look, like standard games, you can't just have like four creatures in play and not get not get any removed right so like th these are the things we could try but like also it's gonna be a uphill battle to like mm -hmm. actually make this work so so like even before you release a set sometimes you know that certain mechanic is just basically for limited right like that happens like like with a party as you said for example yeah yeah well, it's, it's, it's not like just for limited like we we make sure it works in limited and then and then party's kind of a thing where it's like Okay, well, like, like, let's at least support it so like someone could bring it to F and M and not just get totally owned. Um, but understanding that, like, yeah, the because we all have to think in chances, right? Like, we we can't say like, oh, this will work or this won't work. We have to think, okay, like, this will likely not work, but like, let's at least let someone have fun with it, even if it won't, you know, be a pro tour thing. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll we'll try to we'll try our best to make it competitive. Uh, like kind of the idea we had was um, there's kind of like these mono white party cards that like we we tried to make competitive, but at the end of the day we knew like it's just a shot we're taking. We're, mm. we're not like trying to force it one way or another. How big of a difference plays the fact that you know you make like a new 
completely new card or say like a planeswalker or a new mechanic and you guys like not really sure whether it can be potentially broken or like really good like do you, are you maybe like more strict on those cards or does that like not really matter you just like play with the card and see how it plays out we are more strict now i'd say i can't give too many details but like um companion like obviously that was like way too strong we were yeah <laughs> balls, basically right but uh that was like like when we were making companion that was more of a time where we're like let's see what happens but now we're uh i'd say we're much more like trying to be on top of that earlier in the process and like understand like we're working on like thinking like okay what goes wrong if this is the best thing to do and um yeah it's just a, a lot of things change from like war of the spark through ikoria to pass that mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting. Oh, sorry. Seeing the start of that, people are just seeing the start of that because like Kaldheim is relatively tame, and Zendikar outside of Omnath is relatively tame, uh, <laughs> but like in good ways. Like, so I hope that continues at least. <laughs> it's interesting that you mentioned Companion. Did you guys just think that the the rules to to be able to play the card were like strict enough that you know it would just show in only like couple of decks or like you know <laughs> it, it just seems kind of weird to like give people a free card but yeah uh, yeah I think we just kind of bit off more than we could chew like like the example is like that I like to give is like we so cat oven and Loris right mm -hmm. they, they go so well together we had a cat oven deck we didn't think it would be the best thing in the world, but we, we knew of the combo. And then the lyrics came out and it's like, we put them together and we're, it, but because we don't have the exact best deck of like this one thing, like it, it's hard. It, at the time we didn't like kind of do the, the step forward of like, oh, like these things go so well together. It's just such a perfect mix. Um, this could go really wrong, even though like, at the time we had the pieces together we just didn't have like the best version mm -hmm. how often are you actually like accurate like i i assume that you like kind of build the decks that may could could maybe like see play in standard with those cards that are have been released um and you just play with them against each other right how often are you accurate with like the decks that are gonna see play would you would you say that you usually know or um the decks themselves aren't that accurate i we, like we you mean you mean like the specific version or like the deck itself? Like the specific version, we're definitely not accurate. And then there's kind of like we I think of them as packages more than decks. Like like cat oven is a package. Okay, where where does that go in? Like does that go in a sacrifice deck? Okay, that's what happened. It, it could also be like kind of a life gain deck. I know life gains like usually a more casual thing, but. I mean, th there are life gain cards, and it's well, there is a pretty all. competitive historic life gain, like Angel's deck. That's yeah, kind of yeah, a life exactly. gain, yeah. Right, right. So, like, <laughs> so, like, even though life gain is usually not competitive, like, you can mm -hmm. see we, we we try to make cards for it, and it just so happens to be in historic when they all come together. But uh, so yeah, it's more about like packages that I think we're we're reasonably accurate on. Like, was like, oh, we know these few cards work together, and. We know these few cards work together, and but then when you go to the second, okay, what does the deck around that look like, or what does the deck around multiple things like this look like? That's when it starts getting muddy, and we we take that into account. Like we 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 don't we don't like buff or nerf something if we have a strong deck for it or not. We just try to like isolate the the packages and and evaluate them from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it was fun talking with you today. Um, before we before before we cut it, maybe you can like tell people where they can uh, find you on the internet, like Twitter. Or yeah, whatever. sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. The only thing I really do is Twitter. Um, it's Twitter at Donald W S J R. It's just my initials, um, and I'm sure you can put that in the YouTube description or whatever. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I don't know. I post about magic. Uh, sometimes post about Pokemon and playing that competitively. And then uh, 
a lot of memes too. I like posting memes. Oh wait, are you are you playing Pokemon? Why did you not tell me that? <laughs> Oh, my bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That, that, that's like yeah. a super, super fun thing to talk about. Maybe we should like talk about it a little bit before before we actually end. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, uh, yeah. So I, it's like it's not the card game; it's the video game. Uh, there's oh, like is a, it like the 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 like gold or whatever? But like a newer version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like red, blue, gold, yeah, silver. Yeah, yeah. But like the newest I love those version. games. It's um, so good. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's pretty cool because. Uh, in the games you play 1v1 but in, in the like the competitive scene is 2v2 mm -hmm. so like so there's a lot more options it's not like oh what one move do i click to hit their thing it's like oh i need to click a move and then i need to pick something and uh and it's just like a lot of mind games because like uh, they could switch out anything at any point um but yeah i got into that at the beginning of last year uh just because i wanted i wanted like that grand prix experience again but then everything shut down so like I, I've done decently well. I've done pretty well in some online tournaments, but uh, I'm actually taking a break now until the... How's, how skill here. intensive that actually is? Because when I was a kid and I played the games, you obviously play against the computer. It's like super easy, right? They never switch yeah, Pokemons. Yeah. You just choose the type that it's good against theirs or whatever. But uh, I assume that uh, it must be like pretty hard. Like as you, as you said, there are probably a lot of options. I don't like actually sure because you have like f only four attacks you can do right but, but you can also like switch pokemons and i yeah, also yeah. assume that the, the pokemons that you choose is like also kind of hard right or like, like i don't know yeah yeah no it's super skill intensive so there, there's like two things going on so first is like making your team so like you get to train pokemon in different ways like you could take the same pokemon and make it like as fast as possible and have the most attack or you could like make it super defensive and like it'll live attacks that people wouldn't expect it to live so there's like a lot of mind games in that like there's like the big thing is doing damage calculations like you you like you like analyze the metagame you're like oh if i put like this much defense in my pokemon it could live this like common attack uh so like that's all super crazy because it feels like there's no there's never like a assault like there's never a best team with like the best spreads because you could always like train your pokemon to beat the best thing but then the second part is, uh, yeah, the actual gameplay is like a lot of. So like in two v two, theoretically, right? You could, oh, I could attack the same Pokemon with two Pokemon and just kill it. But there's a move called Protect, which just blocks all the attacks. So it's kind of like they two for one you if you, uh. if you use two moves into one and you just block them. So that's the that's like that one move is like the centerpiece of everything where it's it's like negate in magic or oh. whatever <laughs> so so basically every every other pokemon has a protect so that anytime you have two pokemons out one of them has to have protect just that like right or uh well it's just a move you could put on a pokemon so like yeah you basically oh do i give up an attack to do protect and then no i understand that it, but like the pokemon actually needs to have that move right so when it's yeah, like yeah exactly if it's so important that like it, it basically means that every second pokemon that you choose or whatever needs to have protect right or your, your opponent doesn't know that you're using it or, or like what do you mean yeah your opponent doesn't know that it has it and um every basically every pokemon could learn it so like you always have to play oh, around it basically i see i see that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. well uh, maybe maybe i should give it a shot sounds interesting i was I, like when i was like age to 11 i played that game like 10 hours a day so yeah maybe, maybe i should try it out it's right. super fun the scene's super small uh but it's it's like it, i think it's like a hidden gem in like esports well, right? well, I, well, well i well i actually watched like a youtube video from like a world championship and it had like i don't know half a, half a million of views so like more than magic i would yeah. say so yeah yeah yeah. it's uh they do really well on youtube because it, it it captures like a really young audience too and uh so it's really popular in that front all right well, uh, uh, thanks for the po Pokemon talk in the end. Uh, <laughs> and uh, see you next time, I guess. Bye-bye. Yeah, later. <laughs>